where did your last listing come from? Hi, Lynn Peterson. Keller Williams, Tacoma. You know, my mom was in that office for a while. Well, I don't, there might be more than one Keller Williams office down in Tacoma, Lynn. But my mom was an, an agent there. She moved down to the Olympia office not too long ago. But Tracy, good to see you. Arizona. Love Arizona. I lived down in Arizona for two years. And I'm uh, about five years, five or six years ago. And I'm kicking myself. Open door sends me. They still think I own that house down there. Um, so they send me like the value of that house you know, every once in a while, um, man, Tracy, I'm, I'm so sad that we sold that to buy up here, but I mean, look, I'm not sad about what's happening with my house up in Seattle, but man, hi, Betty Norman and Andrew Highland park. Awesome. Downtown LA. Absolutely. Um, hi deep in Clifton last listing came from a previous landlord. That's fantastic. Word of mouth. Uh, Andrew says I'm new to brevity. Annabelle says, uh, ooh, she's from Morristown. Paula from Birmingham, Alabama. Ooh, big fan. Big fan. All right. Hi, Betty. She, oh, there she is. She's from previous client. Deep says a high school friend. You got good friends, Deep. You got good friends. Annabelle says a previous client. It doesn't surprise me, by the way, that a lot of you guys are saying things like previous client. You know, the National Association of Realtors will tell us that two thirds of the business on the seller side or on the listing side comes from your guys past clients or your sphere, right? Deep your high school friend. And so it doesn't surprise me that these are some of the answers that we're seeing here as, as I ask you guys where your last listing came from because two thirds of the listings in the, in the business come from your guys past clients and your friends and family. I'm, a, I'm pulling in another tab here to my, my presentation. I'm going to share my screen. It is the top of the hour. And I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see that okay. Uh, here, here's this NAR report. By, if you guys don't read this NAR report, I'm going to share this with everybody right now. This is the NAR Home Buyer and Seller Survey. They do this every, NAR puts this out every year. Hey, Walter, down there in the Florida Keys. Oh, my wife's best friend moved to the Florida Keys. We went down there for their wedding uh, a couple of years ago. Man, that's beautiful country, my friend. That is, I caught my first sailfish ever, Walter. And then the captain told me it was the smallest sailfish he'd ever seen. And he wouldn't even let it on the boat for a picture. Uh, he was that embarrassed by my sailfish. So uh, welcome, Walter. And, and hopefully, I'm, I'm sure you have beautiful weather down there in the Keys. Anyway, this, this um, NAR, home buyer and seller, they call it the Generational Trends Report. Some of the best like data, right? It let us know things like, you know, only 26% of sellers use the agent that they previously used to buy or sell a house, 41% of sellers actually were referred to their agent by a friend, neighbor, or relative. So it doesn't surprise me that some of you guys said, my last, my last deal was a referral, right? There's all sorts of good stats in this thing. Um, we use that as our, our Bible in many ways. And we, a lot of the decisions we make and the ways that we operate inside of Ben Kinney's business, we do it based on some of the stats inside of that thing. It's a really, it's long. There's lots of pages in that, but it's a super easy read because it's essentially just a bunch of graphs and charts. Um, so if you're interested in that, Betty or Chris, I left the link there for everybody for that, that survey. And, and I'll probably touch on a few of the, the, the finer statistics inside of that survey. So we're going to talk about some tools inside of Brivity, help you guys find listings. And we're, I'm just going to dive right in. We got a bunch of stuff here. I think we might even have more than six, but the very first tool, market reports. And I want to take you guys, how many of you guys have been in the industry since 2006? Is there any folks that have kind of been around for a while here? Um, so I started in real estate in, in late 1999, early 2000. So I'm coming to my 22nd year now. So Annabelle was here in 2004. Awesome. So Annabelle can remember a time before there was Zillow. Now, not too long because Zillow came about in late 2005, 2006. But way back then, like there's actually a world, Betty, absolutely awesome. Betty's been around. That's the year I was born, Betty, high five. There's, there's, I can imagine a world where Zillow doesn't exist. Now, back in 2005, the listings had only been on the internet for about 
five or six years. And in some MLSs, they hadn't even gotten on the internet yet. Um, now, by that point, most MLSs were allowing their listings to be put on the internet, but they were not allowing you guys as agents to have in your hands tools where you could share with your database, your past clients, your sphere, what their neighbor's houses were selling for. And so Zillow came along and they said, look, these MLSs, like consumers literally can't find out unless they call you guys. They had to call you and say, hey, my neighbor's house just sold. Betty, can you tell us what it's sold for? They couldn't go on your website, Betty. They couldn't get some report emailed out from you. They had to call you and then that, that information was locked up in the MLS. So Zillow said, you know what? We can go get, we, we'll go raise a bunch of money. We'll convince people that, that if we can provide this information to sellers, we'll attract all of the eyeballs in the industry, right? All the consumer eyeballs and we'll get them way upstream, way before they're gonna buy or sell. And so Zillow went and cobbled this information together from county recorder's offices, basically around the entire United States. And they basically built what our MLS is the entire time were, were holding back from us. They built this, this platform where people could come and they could see what their neighbor's house sold for. And then eventually they would make the Zestimate, right? And people would get a, a Zestimate of what their house was worth. But initially it started because they realized there was this hole in the market and our MLS is like, they did this. Now, years went by, Zillow built the most recognizable name brand in our industry. Like there's been a, a couple of studies done where they go out on the street and they just ask, you know, a hundred or a thousand or whatever is the statistically relevant number of people. Like what's a company that you recognize in real estate and Zillow is the most recognized name. And they did it because there was a void that our consumers wanted this info and, and we, our MLSs didn't give us the power to engage vendors, right? Like Brivity who could build cool tools for you to go deliver that information. Now today, that's no longer the case, right? About five years ago, NAR kind of passed a ruling down to, to MLS boards that said, look, you got to get your agents on the same footing as Zillow. You've got to allow them to send out this pending and sold data to their customers. And so now we can do that. And so we built the market report tool to do that for you. In our databases, we're talking about a place team, a Ben Kinney team, right? In our databases, if we have your address and we have your email, you're getting a market report from us. Now, what is a market report? It's going to share with that, that client, that prospect, that lead, that person in your sphere, that homeowner on the other end. A report at the frequency you decide could go once a week, could go every two weeks, could be sent out to them once a month. A report that shows them anything that's currently active in their area, anything that's currently pending, and anything that's sold in the last 30 days, including the price that it sold for, and then they can go see all the photos. Guys, we've been doing, I've been doing this since late 1999. For, for over 20 years now. We've sent a lot of stuff out to consumers, okay? Um, I've had some of the biggest email lists you guys can imagine. I've sent stuff to you guys as real estate agents when we ran Active Rain. Um, it, it worked inside of Zillow and Trulia who were sending emails and, and listing alerts and different things out to, to hundreds of thousands of consumers a day. Nothing gets opened like our market reports get opened. Nothing gets engaged like these market reports gets engaged. And it makes sense, right? Zillow gets 50 million visitors a month. It's probably even more than that now. I haven't checked for a little bit. And there's 6 million like tops, homes that sell in the United States all year. And they get 50 million visitors a month. So people like to come and look at real estate. That, that promise that that Zillow made, which is you can come to our website and see what your neighbor's house sold for and figure out what your own house is worth. Like we want you guys to be able to deliver that promise as well. Because I promise you, Betty, Annabelle, Wendy, Walter, if you're not giving this information to your sellers, to your sphere, to your, to your leads, to your prospects, they're gonna get it somewhere, right? They're gonna go to Zillow. They'll go to Redfin. They'll go to Google and type in 
what are homes selling for? What did that house in my neighborhood sell for? What, what did that one, two, three, four main street sell for? And they're going to end up on some of their agents website, one of these portals, right? And they're going to capture that person. If it's a portal, they're going to try to turn around and sell you the lead back, Zoe. Right, Troy Marsh, if it's your competitor, well then your, your client, your prospect, your lead is now in that competitor's database because they were able to provide the answer that person needed. And I promise you, if you have a database of any size, somebody's got a neighbor that just sold their house and they want to know what they sold it for. Because in some of our crazy markets, that number might convince them it's time to you know, sell theirs and move to Mesa. Like that's what our folks up here do, right? They, they pack up and they head down to, um, down to Tracy's neck of the woods down in Arizona. Anna, if the subject line on these market report emails, if, if you're doing it based on their address, will be their address. Your market report for 123 Main Street. If, it's a, if you're using a map, so you can draw market reports on a map, or if you're doing a city-based market report, you're like, I just want to show them everything happening in Blaine, Washington, right? Then the titles will kind of key in. If it's a map, it'll key in on the, the nearest city. Your market report for near Blaine, Washington. If it's um, you're actually using the city, then it will key in. It'll say your market report for Blaine 98230 or something like that. And uh, it's one of the reasons these things get opened by people's emails at such a high clip is when you see your own address in the headline of an email, you're like, wait a minute, what's this, right? And look, it, the other reason is they, people want to know, like for most of the people in your database that are getting this from you, their home is the largest asset they own. And the sale of their neighbor's houses is what impacts the value of that asset. Like it makes a lot of sense. They open these things and guys, they open them now. Like so I mentioned earlier, I said, I told one of you guys, my mom was in your office there in the Keller Williams Tacoma. My mom um, is a is one of Ben's partners. She she uses Brivity, and and she's not the only team. We have lots of our our own teams because we really hammer on them about getting these market reports in place. They get come we call them come list me emails, where people literally email us. And my mom for a while would post every one she got like in Brivity Masterminds, and I was like, Mom, can you kind of take it easy? Like we get it, right? I mean, because it happens like every month. But the people will respond and say, Gail, you know, thank you so much. You've been sending this us for a year and a half and we're ready. Like, do you think you could come out on Saturday? And she's like, uh, yeah, I can, I can make that work. So come list me emails. The only, one, the only place we really get those, unless it's from a past client, right, is, is these market reports. Super powerful, get them in play. And, and I mean, we literally go in our database and say, show me everybody that doesn't have a marker report. This is a filter you can run that has an email and a physical address. And there's a tool inside of Brivity where you can go and set your marker reports up 50 at a time. And we have a smart, it's called the smart radius and it'll work to, to identify what's the proper amount of space around their house to set the marker report up for so that they get a good a good kind of amount of, of data inside of that report. Now, eventually, you, hopefully you get one of those come list me emails, right? As a response to your marker report. And so you're going to use the Brivity CMA tool to figure out when you go out to do that listing presentation, what are you going to suggest the range of pricing be? And we never, by the way, this is just a sidebar, like, and you could go find Ben Kinney's listing presentation. If you're a Brivity client, we give you Ben Kinney's listing presentation. And it's in an editable format where you can literally just go and swap out his logo and put your logo in there. Um, and it's based on a bunch of the tools that Brivity offers. And then there's all sorts of videos. Like you go on YouTube, you can go into the, the help area of, of the Brevity CRM and just search for Ben Kinney listing presentation, the video of him giving the presentations there. And then the actual presentation we give you guys as Brevity clients to be able to manipulate. So if you are a client, you reach out to support to get those things. If you're not, and you decide to, to take a closer look and, and possibly partner with us here at Brevity, you can get your hands on those things. Deliana. Um, you, you can't add any more, any more calls to action or any more branding. I promise you they're seeing your brand. They know who sent the email. Like if you think about it in the subject line of the email, it's your name. 
right? The, the subject line is about them. Um, we, we are purposely hold the branding back and dial it into just that stuff at the top because we want that market report to be about them. They know who sent it to them, Deliana. You, you don't need to have like, you know, a big banner or, or a massive logo or, or make it pink. Like let, we, we, we purposely do that to make it about the data on that thing. Um, but you, you can always make a request and almost every single like feature suggestion around here goes by Ben Kinney. And, and we take everyone seriously, um, but we, we have had you know, a number of requests for that. Darren, yeah, it works the same in Canada. It's a little bit, the mechanics behind the scene, Darren, are a little bit different, but I know like in Toronto, this is dependent by the way, on if your MLS board produces or provides sold data in the IDX feed. And Darren, up in Canada, you guys use a thing called the VOW, a virtual office workshop. It's a little bit different than IDX, which has the active listings and all the pending and sold data comes out on the VOW feed. But we do have VOW feeds for, for any of the MLSs that we're engaged with up there, Darren. All right, the, the CMA. So I, I kind of side noted there because we don't actually show up at somebody's house and say, we'd like to list your property at 425,000 because they might say, well, I want to list it at 450 and all of a sudden we're wrong and it's this adversarial thing. We do what we call range pricing. Um, so the CMA actually gives you, it crunches the numbers. You go in, we're pulling in all your data from your MLS. You select five actives that you think are a comp for the subject property, five pendings and five solds. And we make it really easy for you to do that with lots of filtering and maps and stuff, right? But you pick five actives, five pendings and five solds. And then... We, we, you know, we run an algorithm, we crunch the numbers and we give you a suggested range to price that property. Now you could say, maybe you don't subscribe to that style and you're like, no, I walk in there with a number and I want them to see me as the expert and um, fine, you can, you can make it do that too. But that CMA then becomes a beautiful thing. You can print it out. You could show up um, with your iPad or your laptop and pull it up on there and it's all interactive. You could... Um, email it out to the client, although we never email a CMA out. We always want to be there presenting it to them, but you can. So this is once we we're in the door, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that get us in the door, right? Market reports in some cases get us in the door, but if we don't have people to send those market reports to, then what do we do? And if you're a Brevity client already, you know, you get this website and it is High, you have the ability to highly customize it. Now, out of the box, we give you kind of something that we know looks amazing and, and converts really well, but you can go in there and, and tweak away. Now, I call our websites 99% customizable, share and buy, because we hold back about 1%. It's maybe if you were to, you know, it's maybe a little bit more than that, but any of the lead generation components, Rita Alexander, if we, if there's a place on the site where a lead might register, or there's a way for us to kind of bring them in. The property detail pages is the best example of this. Like when they're actually looking at a property on your website, we control those pages, the layout, the calls to action. Um, Deliana, we, we, you know, we have had larger branding on the market reports at some point. And then we did some few consumer focus groups and, and we actually do like testing where we'll, we'll, we'll watch people open a market report and watch where their eyes go when they, um, this vision tracking, like when they're, they literally, what are they looking at? And um, what we found is we are, are pretty good at testing out what gets people to engage. And, and so we hold back a little bit up on the websites. Now, you, you go out and customize And I would encourage you guys, and, and this is, I had somebody one time say, um, you know, I don't really need a website. All my business comes from past clients and referrals. And I said, oh, okay. So what do you think happens when somebody like goes and, and gets referred to you? Like, Sophia, what do you guys think? How, let's, say, let's say your client, right, is at work and their friend is like, hey, do you guys know, you know a good real estate agent? And they say, oh, yeah, you should call um, Sharon By. She's pretty good. Tesha, Regina, like, what do you, Mark, what do you think happens in that scenario? The person that, that got your name given to them, what do they do? 
You think they just call you right away? Marianne, Lynn? Yeah, Rita, they go to your website, right? They're, they're going to Google your name probably first, right? So we got to hope they don't like find Zillow at the top, right? Because they might go to Zillow and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, wait a minute, who's this Mark guy? He looks just as good as Rita and he's even got more reviews. And so we need our websites to rank just when we have our name there. Right. Yeah. Then we got to get some more reviews. Right. But at the end of the day, when they land on our website, like what picture does it paint or is, does it paint a picture of professionalism or does our website look like it came from like the late nineties, early two thousands? Does it represent like our brand and who we are? Does it, does it like strike any chord with them geographically? Does it make them feel at home? This is a website of, of uh, one of, one of Ben's partners named Travis Bard down in Prescott, Arizona. And Travis, that's not him on the horse. But if you've ever met Travis Bard, that might as well be him on the horse. Like he, he, he wears one of them big old belt buckles. I know that's not Travis because if it was him, I'd be able to see his belt buckle like from behind the horse's head, right? He wear, he's one of them big belt buckle guys. Like he still does rodeo. And like this website screams, obviously the photo, but it, like everything about it down to like the quill written, written Prescott, right? It looks like it was written with a quill pen. Like this, if you, if you've ever been to Prescott, Arizona, by the way, like they still have like that old school courthouse in the center of town. Tracy knows, right? They've got, it's just, it's the old West there. At least that's what it felt like to me. And this is what the website represents. And anybody that lives in Prescott or was thinking about moving to Prescott would like, this would resonate with them, right? Tesha and a seller who landed on that thing is going to think like, okay, wow. Like it's beautiful, right? It's beautiful. He's got a listing guarantee right there. Kind of an obvious call to action for that seller. All right, but but here's really what sellers want. And, and I mean, this is, this was kind of, if there's a few things we could thank Zillow for, one of them, yeah, Tracy, it's such beautiful country up there. One of the things, that's where we, when I lived, you know this probably, but when you live in Mesa or Phoenix or Scottsdale or somewhere, and in the summertime, you get the heck out of there and you go up to Prescott, which is up in the, you know, high mountains, right? Now, one of the things we can thank Zillow for is they have kind of put into the consumer conscience this idea that I can go online and figure out what my house is worth. Before Zillow, there was nowhere to, you didn't go online and figure out what your house is worth, right? You had to call you guys. And so I guess in some ways, maybe if Zillow wasn't existing, they'd have to call us still, Tracy. But look, that was never going to, right? That, that genie was never going to stay bottled. Now, we know these, est these estimates from a computer, not taking into account like that local expertise and knowledge and the fact that it's next to the power lines or it's on the water or it's, right, all these variables totally remodeled versus it still looks like it was made in the 60s. Like, computers can't model pricing. Not yet. They haven't gotten good enough. There's still this margin of error, but consumers don't care. They still want to have this sense of what their largest asset is worth. And so your website has to deliver that on that promise too. Like I can show you or let you know as an estimate what your house is worth. What the value of this for you guys is it's somebody raising their hand saying, hey, what is my house worth? And there's like, we've been able to determine four reasons people do this. Tracy, there are four reasons people raise their hand and say, well, hey, what's my house worth, okay? The first one, they're thinking about selling it. And I have no question Tracy would be able to help them if that was the case. Now, Mark, the second reason is they're thinking about refinancing. And I'll bet, Mr. Delworth, you have, somebody could help with that. I bet you have a lender that would love to, to be past the lead that came to your website when you called them and said, hey, we know we saw that you were curious about what your house is worth. And normally when people do that, it's for a couple of reasons. They, you know, they're thinking about selling, they're thinking about refinancing, or they're just curious for their own, you know, for their net worth tracker. 
which one are you? And they said, hey, I'm looking to refi it and, and I could pass them over to my lender. Now, the third one is they're just curious, right? Sometimes people are just curious. Maybe they they fought, they're a student of Ben Kinney and they do our wealth series from the Win They Give podcast. And so one of the, the steps of the wealth series is figure out what your current net worth is. And so in order to do that, they had to figure out what their house is worth. They're going to sell it one day. It's just not today, right? The last reason, by the way, the fourth reason is they're getting divorced, Marion, and they want to know what half is, right? You can help that person too. Tesha, no. <laughs> what, what somebody that says, um, oops, I didn't mean to push that button. Here's what, like, you want to know, they, they would have had to have entered their address, hit find out now. On the next page is where they put in their name and their email and their phone number. Then they would have had to submit there. So they actually hit like two buttons, filled out a bunch of information, personal information of their own. Like what those people really mean, Tesha, is, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were going to call me. I'm not actually ready to do business right now. So I don't want to waste your time. So I'm just going to say I didn't mean to do it. That's okay. Listen, when somebody says like, I didn't mean to push that button, I say, oh my gosh, no problem at all. Listen, did you end up seeing the value that we delivered for you though? What'd you think of it? Like, it's no big deal. Listen, that we put that tool out there for people to use. If you didn't mean to use it, that's no big deal. But are you curious what your house is worth? Is this your address? We could, it's not an inconvenience for us at all. It's literally why we're here. Yeah, HomeBot's not bad, Tesha. What the thing that HomeBot doesn't do, I believe, is it doesn't let the consumer see the actual homes next to them. It's a roll-up of stats that says stuff like, oh, your market's trending in this direction, or the average list price is this, or average days on market. It's this compilation of the stats. I think HomeBot does give them a, an actual estimate of the value of their home, Tesha. Um, we do that when they go asking for it here, but on the market reports, when we're dripping on them, we don't tell them every time we drip on them, your house is worth 307,625, like using a Zestimate, or we've got another valuation model from a place called Home Junction. We crunch our own valuation model. So when a consumer comes here and puts in their information, they get on the back end three valuations, and then we, we do kind of a blended average to show them a number. And by the way, that none of those numbers are right because we're not you guys, right? Boots on the ground who know how to price a property specific in that market, which is becoming more challenging right now, by the way, because people are bidding fifty, a hundred thousand dollars over. But it all starts for most sellers by by being curious what their house is worth. You guys have to have a tool that delivers that. Tesha, and one one of the other, we we could all day long send people. Here's what with the value of your house. We, we do it different. We just send them their neighbor's houses that sold so they can start to understand their own, their home's value. Because if you send them a value, right? We, we send it out. We said, look, Tessa, your house is, Tessa, your house is worth 412,000. When you get that, if you think your house is worth less, you're like, oh, Bob's the best. He thinks it's worth more. But if you think your house is worth 450 and I send you something, Tessa's telling you my, your house is worth 412. I might never get a chance to, to let you know that's not, you know, these, these algorithms can, can be mistaken. Because you're going to be like, that Bob guy's a moron. My house is worth way more than this. Like, I'm not taking his calls no more. I'm going to take calls from this, you know, the Zillow agent who told me my house is worth more. So we just give them the data. You know, if, if, when they're ready to sell, we can help inform them on a more particular price of what their home is worth. All right, I'm going to keep moving on. There's a lot more tools to talk about. So here's, here's the next one, and, and this is both. So we've got a thing called Brevity Market. I'm going to show it to you at the end where you guys can run your own Facebook ads. Julia Kwan, we don't send a range on the market reports. All we do is literally show them. There's a few like kind of high-level statistics, average price of homes, you know, average days on market, um, number of new listings, number of properties that have sold in the last 30 days. But we, and then we just show them the neighbor's houses that are selling, Right? People understand, they, they know, gosh, if my neighbor's house, which is really similar to mine, sold for 650, you know, they are a couple hundred square feet bigger, like maybe we could get 650 or, you know, th and that's the kind of questions they ask, Julia. Hey, we saw our neighbor's house sold for 485. Like, do you guys think we could get somewhere close to that? You know, and, and we respond and say, 
man, we sure hope so. We, we could know for sure if you'd like to, to meet us out at your place. Like we could, we could be out there tomorrow or Friday. All right. Um, so Facebook campaigns, the, you guys can self-manage these. Okay. And, and you should, we're getting leads. A lot of agents are getting leads, $1.50, $2, $2.50 a lead inside of our Brevity Marketer Facebook ad tool. But we also manage campaigns. So you can come to us, say, look, I've got a budget. I want to have a consistent flow of seller leads coming in, people that have raised their hand and said, hey, how much is my house worth? We've also got uh, some other seller lead campaigns that we use. We do a seven mistakes home sellers make campaign that we put out, which is really great for, you know, who would be clicking on an ad or an article for seven mistakes that home sellers make? Like maybe somebody thinking about selling their house and didn't want to make any mistakes. But here is probably, you guys, the most effective method we've found for generating seller leads at a really affordable price. Look, we can generate seller leads all day long, but they are more expensive always than buyer leads. So here's the tactic that are, that when, if you were to come to us and engage us for a campaign, here would be my suggested tactic, okay? We target the, the first move up price point in your market for buyers. Because those people have houses to sell before they move up. So here in Bellingham, Washington, <laughs> this is insane, by the way, for, in my head, because I've lived in this area for a long time. The, the move up price point here is probably about 700,000, right? If it, I mean, it's a four to $500,000 first time home buyer market here. And now you can go out in the county right outside of Bellingham and, and find stuff at the three in the 300 range for a first time home buyer. But here in Bellingham, the first time range is, is four to six, four to five, somewhere in that range. So when we, so when we run ads here, we run ads geared at those listings in the seven, 800,000, maybe $900,000 range. Because when you understand Facebook advertising, Facebook get paid when people click on ads. So Facebook puts the ad in front of the person they think is the most likely to click on it. So who's the most likely to click on like an $800,000 house? Is it a college student at Western who Facebook knows makes $15 an hour working at the coffee stand and, and rents? Or is it the, the attorney in town that Facebook knows owns a $500,000 house, has been an attorney for five years, he's just about to make partner. Um, you know, he just had another kid, which means he needs a bigger house. Like who's Facebook going to, and by the way, Facebook knows all that stuff about the attorney that I just mentioned. They know all that stuff about the college kid too. They're going to put the ad in front of the guy that just had, you know, the, the new baby and, and the promotion at work who can afford the $800,000 house now. And oh, by the way, Julia, when we get him as a three, $2 buyer lead, he also has a house to sell. These are really, really effective at generating seller leads so we can fill that funnel, right? One of the first questions we ask buyers, it doesn't matter, like, like sometimes look, the most common thing you get from a buyer lead, and this is back to, to Tesha's like, oops, I didn't mean to push that button. And what they really meant is I'm not ready to talk to you right now, right? But one of the most common responses you'll get is I'm just looking, Tesha, you'll get the lead, they'll say, Oh, you'll reach out to them, right? Maybe it's a Brevity Auto plan that fires off and starts talking to them automatically, right? And they go, oh, oh, I'm just looking. Now, most agents would say, okay, that sounds good. Listen, I'm here if you need anything. You just let me know. What, our, what, we're tra what we train our agents to say is, hey, that's awesome. We're so glad you found our website to start looking. Listen, do you currently live in the area? Oh, you do. Oh, that's fantastic. Do you own, like, do you own right now or are you renting? Oh, you're a homeowner. Oh my gosh, congratulations. Will you be keeping this house and renting it out to start building wealth through real estate? Or are you guys going to need to sell this place and, and use part of that for the down payment on the next house? Too many people treat their buyer's leads as buyers. When, when 60, you know, two thirds of, of the country owns the house they live in, you guys, 
That means two thirds of your buyers are going to sell the house before they go buy the next one. Now, the next thing we do then is we have what's called dynamic property retargeting. So if people are on our website, let's say they're looking at a $500,000 house up here in Bellingham. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to follow them all around the internet, Mark Dilworth, just like Nordstrom. Like, I don't know what you guys like, but I guarantee if we pull your Facebook or, or even your phone up and we started looking around at, at the ads that you're being served, I'd know what you like. Rhett, I'd be really easy to be able to be like, oh, Rhett likes, you know, hunting and camping and fishing or Martha likes uh, mountain climbing or Mark likes shoes or I like shoes, you guys. I love shoes. Um, I, I'm a Jordan addict. I got more Michael Jordan. I got more Jordans in my closet than like, it's ridiculous. Okay. The internet knows this. And so they feed on that. They are constantly serving up shoes to me everywhere I go. And when consumers get on your website, we can constantly start serving houses to them anywhere they go. Now, why does this matter to a seller? It matters to a seller because we tell them about this when we're out there at the house. We say, listen, when we take your listing, we want you to be aware of one of the programs that we run. It's called Brivity Connect. And every day we have people showing up on your website. And in fact, in a few minutes here, I'm going to show you those people that are on my website. But what we do is we re- target those people with listings. So if anybody's been on our website, and I'm going to show you some people that have been on my website recently looking at a house very similar to your house, which means we already have engaged buyers waiting for your house to hit the market. But when they do, we're not just going to email it out to them, which we are. We're not just going to call them and tell them about it, which we are. We're actually going to follow them around the internet with what we call dynamic property targeting. And we're gonna target those individuals every time they get on Facebook, every time they open Instagram, every time they're engaged with a service that uses Facebook's advertising platform, which by the way, is a lot of the internet today, we're gonna be showing your properties. Now, if they're on a Google service platform and by by guys if you when you like leave here today you guys all have your phone within arm's reach i have no question if you pulled your phone open flipped it open went to the first thing where you would see an ad maybe you went and played candy crush and give you that ad in between or you went to facebook where you'd see the ads or you pulled up the website you like to go to if you see an ad 98 percent of those are being served by facebook and google so on the facebook side we retarget them with properties on the Google side, we basically beat your brand messaging into their head and everywhere they go, they see you guys. Now, not just the buyer, the, our sellers. Any seller we have in our database, we can have the Brivity Display Network Branding Campaign set up. And this is called Brivity Connect. And we just go after the database, right? So here's what's gonna happen. Over time, your sellers, they're gonna realize they saw you on the Wall Street Journal. They saw you on CNN. Guys, if they lean, they love Fox News and they're, they're Trump all the way and they lean to the right, awesome, you'll be there. If they're no, never Trump and they lean to the left and they're MSNBC, awesome, you'll be there too. When they're on the local Bellingham Herald, you'll be there. When they're sick and tired of the news and they kick up on their couch to play Candy Crush and that ad shows up in between games, Tesha, you'll be there. That seller will realize Tesha Perry must spend a million dollars on advertising. She's frigging everywhere. She follows me around the internet. Like, yeah, Tesha, we know who's in our site. I'll show you in just a second. Um, we can do buyer campaigns. We can do seller campaigns. All right, the next, the next tool we're going to have to wow our sellers is quickly. So it's a part of the Brivity platform, and it's a text based lead service where you can put out a sign, right? We do these as a writer. There's a lot of other ways to use quickly, but I'm gonna talk about the primary main way, which is at your listing, no more flyers, right? We used to use flyers. What happens with those? We don't know. All we know is three days later, the seller calls us and they're like, get your butt out of here and give me some more flyers. Right, Tesha? You ever had that happen? You're like heading off to a showing and your seller's calling you, hey, can you bring me more flyers? And you're like, I don't know, can I send you the PDF? You can just print them off and go stick them in the box yourself. 
Now we get paid well for what we do. So we run over there and we scurry off and we get the flyers, right? Not anymore. We got quickly now. We have a sign out there. If a consumer drives by and there's no flyers in the box, we don't even have a flyer box. They can text a keyword to a short code. Super simple. And based on the GPS location of their phone, we'll send them information about the property they're looking at. And we'll send you the most valuable piece of information in real estate, their phone number. And 100% of the time, Tesha, it's the person that did the thing. If they say to you, I didn't mean to send that text code in, they're full of shit. I mean, they did it. <laughs> they took a word, they put it in their phone, they sent it to a number, and then they identified a property. How many of you guys get fake leads on, the, on your website? If you get leads on your website, you get fake ones occasionally, right? I can remember, I've been doing this for a while. We were one of the first groups to put listings on the internet here in the Northwest MLS in Washington State back in like 2000. And like Windermere, John L. Scott and us, we had a, a company up here, a small company called Brio Realty. And, or why not own, I guess, at that time. But anyway, I can remember the first time Bill Gates signed up on my website. And Julia, I was, I ran into my partner's office because we, we sold real estate in Bellevue, Washington. Our office was a rock throw away from Microsoft's campus in Redmond. And so to me, I was like, we were one of three sites on the internet. And we were the best one. We ranked the highest. And that was pre-Google days. There was a thing called Overture that fed like Yahoo and AOL. And we ranked at the top of it. So like, it wasn't that crazy to me that Bill Gates could have went on Yahoo and typed in homes for sale in Bellevue and found our website. I ran into my partner's office. I'm like, hey, Bill Gates, like, signed up on our website. We're going to be rich. He's going to buy this $25 million house in Seattle. It's the most expensive one on the market. And my partner was like, hey, that's not Bill Gates, man. He's like, that's just a bogus lead. Look at the email address. It's, like, made up. I was so disappointed. We never get a fake lead with quickly. It's always that person at the other end. It, it automatically taps into your MLS. You use the same side and the same code from property to property. And we just send back the right information based on where they are physically. We can route the leads in the back end to you, to your co-listing agent, to, to a group of your buyer's agents if you want them routed that way. Every listing you take is a is a resume for your next listing, right? When you take a listing in a neighborhood, I guarantee you anybody in that neighborhood that's thinking about selling their house anytime in the next three to six months has their eyes on what you're doing with that listing. So if you have an empty flyer box, like all the other listings on the street, not that impressive. If you've got something different, an ability for 24 seven access to the information about that house, even when the flyer box is empty, that stands out to that next seller in the neighborhood. I promise you it stands out. I keep mentioning my mom. Um, they close about one in 13 of their quickly leads in the first 90 days. And one in three of those closings that they're getting out of quickly are a seller. There's somebody in the neighborhood, right? They list the property. And my, what my mom told me is on that first day the property's listed or that second day is when you get the most of the in inquiries are seller inquiries. Because think about who sees a sign in a neighborhood. It's other people that live in that neighborhood, right? They're out walking the dog and they're like, oh, what what the Johnsons list for? It's gold. It's gold. Listing alerts. So one of the ways that we find sellers for you guys, because again, a lot, so many teams, so many agents, they don't think about everybody in the database as a potential seller. They think, oh, these leads came from my website. They're a buyer lead. Oh, these were, these were home light leads. They're a buyer lead. A lot of these people are seller leads too. And so every listing alert that we send out, and, and we hope you guys have every single buyer prospect ever. I don't care, Sarah Struck, if they are a five-year-old lead from Zillow, they need to be on a listing alert, driving them back to your website. We bake into those, and you can see it over here on the right where that little orange button is, know your home's value. We bake into every single listing alert, and we're sending millions of listing alerts out of Brevity. Every one of them has a seller call to action in it. Hey, you own a home? You need to sell it before you go buy the next one? Go find out what your house is worth, right? And we drive them back to that, that home valuation page on your website.
Tesh, I'm going to go in and show you this real fast. So you had, um, you said, hey, you can see inside of Brivity what, who's on your side. And yeah, and then we can also see like what they're looking at. Um, I want to take you in. This is uh, Ben Kinney. He's our founder of Brivity. He runs a business um, up in Bellingham under the, the Place brand. Um, this is his business, his, his original Ben Kinney team in Bellingham, Washington. This is their database. It's one of their Brivity databases. They have a couple. Um, when we go out to a listing, we will do stuff like this. We'll say, listen, one of the, one of the things that and you can see this in Ben's listing presentation, him deliver this, but he'll say, Hey, one of the things that we're going to do, you know, cause we're going to list your house. We're going to get your house listed somewhere between, you know, 600 and 700,000. And one of the things that we're going to do is we've had a bunch of people in the past that have been on our website looking at properties here in Bellingham and Blaine and, and Ferndale, some of the, the kind of main cities here in Whatcom County. And um, in price ranges, you know, real similar to what we're going to get your house listed at. And so what we're going to do is immediately we're going to go back the day we get that house listed and we're going to take our team and we're going to go and we're going to call these 621 leads that have been on our website looking at properties in Bellingham or Blaine or Ferndale between six and 700,000. We're going to go call them all. Right? We're going to go call every one of these potential buyers that we have right now in our database. And in fact, you know, some of these people, they, it's been a while right, that since they've looked. Some of these people were here today. Right? Marty Jelinski was here an hour ago. Susan Williamson was here three hours ago. Shauna Rouse was here 13 hours ago. We're going to go call all these people. When we take your listing, we promise we're going to go call a bunch of buyers we have in our database that are looking for your house right now. I would challenge you to ask anybody else who's coming to the, like, I don't know if you're interviewing any other agents, but see how many people they're willing to call who they know are looking at a house just like yours. Tesha, would that be a value to you if you could, could first off have buyers back here looking on your website and not only would you know they were there, you'd know exactly what they were looking at. And I think that'd probably be just valuable to you. Forget the seller, right? We know who to call. We know the right person to call at the right time. And we'd probably even know what to say. Like if I called this guy, I'd be like, hey, Bobby, you want to go see that house out there on Cedarwood that you looked at three times? It's also a great tool to put in front of our seller and say, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go call these people that have been on your website. They've been on our website looking at your house, right? The reverse prospecting is, is maybe one of the most underutilized. I mean, there's a bunch of underutilized tools in Brivity, but this is a big one. Yeah, I'd like, I don't know how many of you guys would love to double end your next listing, but like, this is how you do it, right? You go find people the day your listing goes live that are looking for your listing, and then you go try to sell it to them. Look, I get in this market, we don't need to market our listings very hard. Like, if you price it right, they're, it's flying off the market most likely especially in some of the first and second, you know, time home buyer price ranges, right? The luxury market, it might sit a little longer and you got to work a little harder, but in, the, in our sweet spots of our markets right now, they're flying off, which is great, but it also makes us lazy sometimes. What happens later when we're going to have to go get this house sold, right? Are we keeping those same practices? No, by the way, like in this market, we could be lazy and take half of the commission or we can go find the buyer and take all six or 7%. Now, if we were going to go call 621 of those people that showed up, you know, looking for a house in Bellingham, we need some efficient way to do it. So we've got a dialer inside of Brivity. It's a single line dialer. It's not a big triple line dialer like Mojo, but it efficiently allows you to get through a, a high number of contacts. Let's say you were going to call your past clients today. Awesome. A diet. We've we've tested this. We've timed people. We've sat with stopwatches behind our agents. It will it 
when you transition from one call to the next inside your CRM, the fastest you can do it is an average of 20 seconds in between calls. So we've looked at a bunch of people that all make about 30 calls a day into their database. No, Tesha, it doesn't have the auto voice drop stuff. That voice, you know, the, the skip the cell phone or skip the deal straight to voicemail is legally questionable. And we try to stay out of those gray areas of the law because we don't want to end up in a big mass action lawsuit where we give you guys a tool that a bunch of you guys go out, start using. And all of a sudden we have a class action law. Th those, you'll, if you look really close, most of those companies that do the voiceless or the, the ringless voicemail drops are based off offshore. They're not based here in the U.S. Um, yeah, there's a lot of reasons to be a good a good tool. I would say Tesha that a, a text message would be even better for a for a in a, an event invitation than a, a a voice message. I think the most recent stats I've seen on voicemails listened to versus text messages read. Text messages have a little bit of a lead there. Like there's still a lot of people out there that do not listen to a voicemail from a phone number they don't recognize. It's getting easier today because Google, like if you have an iPhone, they translate them and stuff. But anyway, um, we, we, we timed people. Here's what we found. When they were making 30 calls in a day, when they started manually dialing them, they were transitioning 10 seconds. They'd get off one call and in 10 seconds, they could dial the next call and boom. That's because they knew they were being timed. By the end of those 30 calls, they were making 30 second transitions. They just slow down over time. On average, 20 seconds. Now think about this. If you were a person that made 30 calls every day into your database, if you manually dialed versus using a dialer, if you save 20 seconds every call, that would mean every three calls you save a minute. When 30 calls, you would, you would save 10 minutes not dialing the phone if you used a dialer. If you did that every day this week, you'd, you'd save 50 minutes not dialing the phone. You'd save a whole hour, basically. You could like go have lunch with your wife or your husband, or your partner. Would that like be a better use of your time than just dialing a phone? Like that is, by the way, if you did that like all year this year and you took a couple weeks off, so you did it for 50 weeks this year, you saved an hour, that's 50 hours that you could save not dialing your phone. That's a whole week's worth of work or a half a week for some of you, you crazies. Like I'm taking a vacation with those 50 hours. Like I'm not just sitting here dialing my phone. Yeah, you can dial based on a tag, Tesha. You just pull into the index, anybody with that tag, you select 50 at a time and you hit dial and boom, it calls you once and then it starts calling Perry and Christopher and Aaron and April and Cappy and, and you control, you know, you can end the call or save and continue or add your notes and absolutely call based on a tag. Smart transaction auto plan. So Brivity was originally built as a transaction management system and our transaction auto plans, I could spend three hours talking about the transaction plans. There's all sorts of automation. There's all sorts of automated communication that happens. Um, there's, the, it, it kind of lives and breathes every transaction. I'll give you an example of some of the automation. Like we don't have to remind anybody of anything. What we do is we add all the dates in and then we've got all these automations where, um, a text message goes out to the home inspector the day before the inspection, reminding them that he has scheduled an inspection with us tomorrow at 1 to 3 Main Street. At the same time, a text goes out to the seller, letting them know that their inspection is happening tomorrow. And we didn't do anything. We just entered the date whenever we figured out when the inspection was. And all that automation had been set up. And, and we've got these plans that you guys can kind of riff off of, use our kind of templated plans, and then you know, build in things that are particular to your business. We've got lots of training around this. We, every couple of weeks, restart like a training series on how to get really efficient with auto plans on your transactions. I'll tell you this, there's, there's two gals, Tessa and Olivia here in Bellingham, and they will manage, one of them manages our listings and there'll be about 600 listings um, last year she did. And one of them manages all the pendings and it's like, 900 pendings or something insane for for like our entire washington operation ben's you know seattle team my mom's olympia team the team in everett and the team up here in bellingham 
two ladies managing like 900 transactions, eight to 900. With some VA help, don't get me wrong, they bring VAs into the business, but we don't have a massive amount of overhead for the, the, you know, the massive volume that we do. Why? Because we're efficient with our auto plans. Everybody knows their job. When they show up at work, they know exactly what needs to get done to move that transaction along so that all those promises our listing agent made when they were out at the table of the seller get delivered on. And ultimately, the number one issue that sellers have, and it's in that NAR report that I gave you guys at the very start of the call. And if you join late, I'll give it to you again. The NAR Home Buyer and Seller Survey, when they ask sellers, what do you wish your listing agent would have done better, been better at? What was the most frustrating part? A lack of communication consistently ranks as the number one thing. We make sure daily or weekly, depending on how you want to set it up, that your clients are updated on exactly what you're doing on their transaction. And there's a portal they can log into at any time to see all the key dates, all the stuff you guys have been doing, all the marketing. If you go read the Ben Kinney team's reviews on Zillow or Google or their Facebook page, a lot of every other review, every third review says something to the effect of they, they, they let me know everything that was going on. Like, and a lot of times we, we work a lot of expired and cancels and I get there's not a ton of those in this market anymore, but there are some, if you catch a, um, if you catch a review from somebody that was listed with somebody else and it canceled or expired and we picked the listing up almost to a person, they will call out the difference in the level of communication they got from us than they got from that agent. And it's, it look, it's, Sure, we have a team, right? But more than anything, it's the privity platform communicating what we're doing along the way. Okay, I'm going to show you guys this one. And we've got about seven minutes left here. I'm going to show you really fast privity marketer in person um, because one slide doesn't do this any justice. Brivity Marketer is a tool we've built for, for our Brivity platform customers to basically we, we pipe in all the data from your MLS and we create all the marketing back here that you would ever need. And within a few clicks, you can have beautifully designed whatever you need. And so direct mail marketing. Every time you guys take a listing or, you, or one of yours goes to sold in the MLS, we create a postcard campaign back here for you and it's sitting there waiting to send. So all you got to do is come in and tell us how many people you want to send it to. Now, you can choose not to send it, obviously, right? Or you can choose to send it. It's like 69 cents for the small postcards, 99 for the medium size, $1.29 for the large size. And the postcards are, you know, it's postage, postcards, delivery, first class USPS mail, they're tracked. And if the postcards get returned undeliverable, we'll even give you a credit back for them. The postcards have tracking on them so that if somebody grabs the postcard and they they engage the URL that's on that postcard. We know what house they were in and we drop a lead in your CRM automatically. We've got AI that we use to target, artificial intelligence that we use to target the list. So if you said, look, I want to send my, I got a new listing. I want to send it out to 200 people. We don't just send it to the nearest 200 houses, Troy Marsh, okay? Sophia, what we do is we go out and we run an algorithm and say, well, who are the best houses to send this to? Like, we're not going to send it, Walter, to somebody two doors down that just bought their house three months ago because they're thinking about, like, couches and curtains, my friend. We're going to send it to the guy seven doors down that's lived in that house for 10 years that we know has, you know, massive equity that you know, that's a better target for your advertising than the guy next door that can give a rip because he just moved in that house and he's not going to sell it for seven to 10 years. Flyers, you need an open house flyer. This is how easy it is. I just come in here. I'm just like, oh, I like this template. Let's run with this template. And then I go in here and I pick up property. I'm like, here, let's do this one. A uh, boom. And let's create it. And now I have a flyer. Awesome. Like how fast was that? Well, super fast. I can print that thing out, download it, send it off to my printer if I wanted. We even do print for you guys. If you could, if you have a three to four day turnaround, we can print, we can print it for you and send it back to you.
Here's where you run your own digital ads. We've got guardrails up here. We, we even have a guy, Jesse. All he does all day long is train you guys on how to do this. Social media, Are you guys putting social media graphics out? Here's what we do when we have a social media. We want to put it on Facebook. It's here. Boom. Which property? How about this one? Where's that one we just did? Right here. Boom. Create social media. Awesome. I got a sweet social media graphic now I can go put out there when we get this property under contract. High five. Oh, I want to do a story? Okay, fine. I'll go do it as a story. Right? Under contract. Story. Size. Boom, listing, done, create. Go throw it on my stories on Instagram or Facebook, right? And I can control all this. I can edit this. I can swap the photo out. I could change the wording in here, right? It doesn't have to be red. It could be black, it could be yellow, it could be blue. It could be your own hex code color. You want to do a video? Sweet, we can make videos real easy. We just pull in all your photos. We, we, move, we make a move. We put some cool music over the top of it. We do these overlays with the, the bedrooms and the bathrooms and the price and the square footage. Now you've got a video. 10 seconds tops. It takes you to have an awesome video. You can go market. You can give to your sellers and say, hey, post this on your Facebook so everybody can see what your house looks like. Brevity Marketer is just ridiculously powerful. And again, this collateral that you can create back here, every listing you take, that last listing you took, you guys all told me where it came from. It was an audition for your next listing. Are you wowing the people that are coming across your listing with the tools that you have at your disposal? I hope so. And if you're not, what you can do you can pull out your phone right now and you can text platform to 59559. If you guys are interested in doing a demo with one of our salespeople, getting an understanding of our price points. Guys, we have price points in every budget. Okay. And we have, we have you know, kind of flexibility that as, if, if, man, if you're looking, you're a single agent right now, but one day you'd love to grow a team, awesome. We're the place for you. If you're a team right now and you want to get bigger, awesome. We're the place for you. If you're a massive team and, and, you're, you're looking, look, when you get to be a big team, that next step happens almost purely on the back of efficiency, right? We've helped a lot of teams, right? I mean, and Ben's was the first one. Like our, you know, our prototype is Ben Kinney's business. Look, not everybody wants to build a big business like that. And we have plenty of, of, of folks around here that, that are building a business just like yours. We'll fit you into the right, the right, the right plan. Text platform to 59559 if you're interested. Listen, uh, Tesha, Anna, Sophia, Troy, thank you so much. Zoe, you guys, Lisa's, there's a bunch of Lisa's. Awesome. Catherine, Karen, you guys have an awesome rest of your week. Uh, hopefully, if you're, look, if you're a Brivity client, I hope I turned you on to something that you didn't realize existed or you knew existed, but you'd forgotten about it. And you're like, I'm going to go do that thing and learn a little bit more about that thing. If you're not a Brevity client, I'll leave you guys with this. That, that claim that's being made in the top right-hand corner, the only system that guarantees success in real estate is a massively bold claim. Here's why we make it. And here's what I think is the number one differentiator between Brevity and, and every other platform out there. Ben Kinney made Brevity to run his own business. And we continue to this day to use it to support, Ben has 110 partners around the United States. They're called Place. We use this every single day, okay? We are highly, highly invested in making Brevity better, but it's not just the software you get. Not only do we, obviously you get the software, we share with you everything that we do on Ben's teams. We share every auto plan that we use, every lead conversion plan, every strategy, every method, every tactic, every script. We share the listing presentation. Like if you want access to the best business in real estate, you guys, it is literally one of the best businesses in real estate. Brivity gets you access, not just to an amazing platform. It gets you access to the models and the systems that Ben Kinney and his teams have used to build some really outstanding businesses. That's 
why we're willing to make that guarantee is it's not just the software, it's the systems and the models that come with it. Linda, the lights, the bottom side is 199 and then it goes up, it just is not much by the way from there. I think growth is uh, 349 a month, but it gets you everything that we talked about here, plus a few things we didn't even talk about today. Linda, text platform to 59559 and one of the, one of the team can jump you on and answer every question you have show you everything. There's a bunch of stuff that I wasn't able to show you today. Guys, Diliana, thank you. We appreciate it. We work hard here to, to earn that. So it's, it's awesome to hear you say. You guys have a fantastic afternoon. My name's Bob Stewart. Bye-bye.